This is my homemade electric scooter. You may remember that I previously built a super large and heavy electric scooter with the intent to use it to get around, but it was just too bulky to do so. So I built a smaller contraption to get me around campus. It's a fun little build that only took an afternoon to fabricate the original structure, but a couple months of refinement to get to where it is today. my latest project. It's kind of like a little scooter mini bike kind of thing. I made the entire thing myself and it's mostly cobbled out of like um, scrap pieces of steel tubes and bike parts and stuff. Um, but I use it to get around campus and it's been quite a good and reliable daily commuter now for me. Like I said, the entire frame I made myself, it's made out of one inch uh, box section from Home Depot and a little uh, foot rest out of some angle iron. Um, but everything is welded together in my garage with a wire feed welder. And we've got some 3D printed parts such as the seat mount here, which is PLA, the motor mount, which is a PETG, along with the entire battery enclosure and the, the, the joining method to the tubes here. As for the steer post and the forks, this was salvaged from an old bike um, and I just painted it over. And these wheels I'm running are very small scooter wheels. These were just ones that I had lying around, so they look very disproportionate on the frame. Handlebars, again, same, it came with the bike as well. Um, I did put a better brake on it, uh, which works with the front wheel's drum brake. And I have uh, e-braking on the rear wheel too, so I have dual wheel braking, um, which is pretty good. The seat I bought on Amazon for like 20 bucks, it's super comfy and cushy um, because there is no suspension on this thing. So all the suspension kind of comes from the little bit of travel that I have in the pneumatic wheels themselves, which is, is not much. It's maybe like five, 10 millimeters or something. So the seat cushion actually helps a lot um, with this kind of bike. As for the rear mounting, I originally envisioned that these two parts could come off and make the wheel really easy to remove. Um, so that's why there are bolts here. And the heads of these bolts are actually welded to the steel and there's like a nut on the other side. So I can technically take these two rails off whenever I want. I've never really needed to do that, um, but it is there in case I want to. This rear wheel is also a scooter tire meant for a stand-up scooter. I don't know if it's meant to go this fast or handle this much weight, and it does get a little bit warm um, when I use it. Uh, same thing with the motor. The manual limit I set for this motor is a draw of 60 amps and a draw of 20 amps when it's braking. And 60 amps gets pretty good acceleration. Originally I had it set at 80, which was a lot, and it was really torquey. Um, but then I realized this motor started getting really hot during some uphill rides. Um, so I toned it down a little bit. And so I still kind of have to be very careful with the power usage. Otherwise this motor gets pretty warm. It is a 6384 motor. It's originally meant for electric skateboards. And I use it kind of like an electric skateboard motor would be used in tandem with a belt here. Drive, driving the rear wheel with a 3D printed pulley. So this is a 16 tooth sprocket and this is a insert number here tooth sprocket for the rear wheel and that gives me a gear ratio of this and this is like a 500 millimeter belt from McMaster and it's a 5m HTD high torque drive belt this motor mount itself is printed out of PETG plastic you can see how many layer lines there are I think I set it to like either 10 or 15 perimeters um, so this is like a super solid block of plastic. This entire motor mount um, with the two triangles here weighs around 220 grams. Um, so it, it did cost a little bit to print, but I think it was worth it because it's super rigid. And it's bolted to the frame with these two bolts that go through this rear uh, piece of angle iron. So just two bolts. And then there's a third one right here for stabilization on this piece of metal. Originally, these two pieces were foot pegs, so a second person could ride, um, but that never ended up materializing. So now it acts as kind of a strengthening point for the motor mount, uh, makes it very rigid and teeth skip sometimes if I'm going over really bumpy ground, but for normal acceleration on asphalt, it doesn't skip at all. And as for controls at the cockpit, I've got just a single throttle lever that controls the throttle and a single brake that feeds directly into the drum brake. It's just a cable actuated mechanism. Um, I did have to modify this brake arm a little bit, drilled an extra hole and put some fasteners in it. 
Um, and this is actually pretty reliable. As for what's going on in the interior here, I left a kind of a lot of open space here. Um, that wasn't quite on purpose, but I just don't really have anything to fill this um, big void. This does make it very easy to pick up though. So if I need to pick it up, I just grab this bottom rail and I have my front arm on the steer post like right here. Um, so I can kind of pick it up like a briefcase almost and then um, have the scooter really close to my body. And that way I can walk up like three flights of stairs, um, which I have to do every day. And this thing is not light. It does weigh like this many pounds. So having a good place to pick it up from and make it really ergonomic that way um, was pretty important for me. Um, as for this, this is just a piece of cardboard that's kind of just a, a little shroud to keep all the attention away from the uh, electronics. So this is just a piece of cardboard sprayed with truck bed liner. Um, and that's why it's black. And inside we kind of have all the electronics kind of taped to the frame just because there's I didn't really have a better way to fasten it. I was a little too lazy to go ahead and 3D print stuff, which would have been the preferred route, I guess. Um, like with the seat mount, for example. So this is a Maker X ESC. It's meant to be used for brushless drive systems, but it works well. It has hall sensors and like the three phase wires for my brushless motor out here. Um, and I have the analog input wired to the analog uh, thumb throttle, which is just a cheap Amazon thing. And as for the battery, it's two 6S's in series, hence why there's two connectors here. That lets me charge the battery with my regular LiPo charger, which I also use for my airplanes. In series with the battery, we have a, just a quick disconnect, so I can just yank it, and that's my key to turn it on. So right now there's no power going to it because the loop is open. And this is an anti-spark connector, so all of these are anti-spark, um, so they're not really annoying and scary to plug in. These two here are the balance leads. I whip those out every time I need to charge the battery um, along with the two actual battery connectors themselves. And just with everything, everything is taped to the frame. This battery, I designed it so it could be easily removed. There's just like two little uh, 3D printed parts that hold onto the frame. So if I disconnect these two, I can pull the entire battery out. Um, this was designed for I guess future battery projects in mind. So technically I could make a different battery and once this one is empty, I could like take it out, put it in my backpack, hot swap batteries um, and continue my ride that way. I haven't done that yet just cause I haven't built another battery pack. This is the only one that I've built, um, but someday I'll get around to doing that. So this is a 12 S 4 P battery pack. Um, I'll put the cells that I used right here and the specs, but basically there's 12 um, series of cells going all the way down here into this bottom part. And then it's four across uh, multiplied. That's uh, 48 cells in total. I just soldered them all. Uh, how you would normally build a lithium ion pack. I'm sure you can find a YouTube tutorial if you're curious, but I use nickel wire and solder to solder it. Um, so that was pretty straightforward. I didn't have a spot welder and I didn't buy one. Um, so I was just very careful with my soldering iron and it worked out perfectly and I charged it no problem. So originally I had a motor mount clamped to right here and this motor was about here in space and I had a much longer belt go to the rear wheel about this long, it was twice as long. And that initially worked fairly well until the teeth started um, kind of decaying because every time I, I um, pushed a lot of power through the motor, um, the teeth would start to skip. I think that's partially because this belt gets kind of warm um, just because it has to deform and go around and um, there's so much power going through the belt um, that it started getting hot and like deforming and getting a little bit loose during every ride and then it would tighten back up after the ride. So all of those cycles, I think it kind of loosened the belt just enough where it would start to skip on the teeth of the motor sprocket. So I hypothesized that a shorter belt would help with that skipping issue and it kind of does. There is a lot less skip with a smaller belt. The tension is exactly the same as it was when the motor was up here. The belt is just a, a lot smaller. It's a lot closer to the wheel. Um, and whatever it is, it doesn't skip anymore, so that's good. So the initial design of the scooter had this seat way up here, and there would be a continuous member all the way across, uh, continuing this part basically all the way to this rear um, seat post. And that put the seat pretty high, um, and that kind of resulted in an uncomfortable position when you're riding, because you're kind of like hunched over the handlebars. So what I ended up doing is cutting it right here and dropping the seat a little bit and then welding in this like little uh, deflection, this little angle thing here. 
Um, so it's much more comfortable to sit on. Um, it does look a little bit more funky though, just cause there's not like a continuous like seat line, you know, like most motorcycles or whatever. But honestly, I was kind of more after uh, function than form here. So it's, it's not too bad. And plus I have like this little shroud to kind of cover up all the nasty wiring and stuff that's taped to it, so. So this is kind of what it's like to ride it. This is my POV. Since I have regen braking, I can accelerate and decelerate with only one thumb. Um, and the front brake is there just kind of as a backup. But yeah, this thing gets around uh, 10 or 15 miles depending on how aggressive I'm riding. So I would describe riding this thing as kind of like a very squirrely bike. Um, it's very twitchy because the wheel is so small. Uh, that being said, it's really good at handling on like sidewalks and stuff and, and making really, sh really sharp hairpin turns um, because of that increased maneuverability. It's just not quite as stable um, as like a bike or anything. Yeah, it's super fun to ride though. Way more fun to ride than a bike just because you're so low and it feels like you're going so much faster. All right, thanks for watching and thanks for coming along on this little scooter adventure with me. That's all for now. Bye.